Is classical music dying? I mean, compare what it was like 250 years ago to what it's like today. The game is that Okay, maybe dying isn't the right word, but some people are turning their backs on it, calling it appalling, while others are celebrating it with gusto. So are they in on a secret that everyone else is just missing out on? I found some answers while spending 10 straight days at a contemporary classical music festival at the Elfromoni in Hamburg. So much of the music was highly experimental and potentially intimidating to a typical classical music audience. What I experienced there was not what I expected, and I even got to interview some of the most sought after composers and performers of our time. I realized that I had so many misunderstandings about this whole scene. So for this video, I've organized a list of five things that you don't know, but should know about the current state of classical music. <laughs> Number one, there are no rules. For 500 plus years since classical music tradition began, every generation of composers and performers have been breaking and creating new rules. Current classical music is at a very dynamic place right now because nothing is off limits, which makes things very exciting, but also very difficult. At this point, there's very little that a composer can do that will actually shock an audience. For example, here's a piece by Stockhausen that's written for a string quartet to be played inside of a flying helicopter. And on the other hand, thanks to John Cage's infamous four minutes and 33 seconds, it's not even shocking anymore if you were to go on stage, do absolutely nothing and call it music. Now, I think it's safe to say that a lot of the shock factor tactics have tapered off, but still there is so much freedom. I guess we're basically at a point where this idea of avant-garde doesn't exist anymore because we have explored most of the possibilities of what sound production is and, and can be. Number two, there has never been as much variety. I don't think there has ever been a time when there was this much difference from composer to composer within a single era. And this is of course inevitable with the last point in mind, having no rules. That is why new music is really genreless. At the Elf Money Visions Festival alone, I not only heard a massive blend of genres in a single piece, for example, in this work by Brett Dean that makes switches between a sort of twisted salon swing to dense symphonic textures. But also, every composer I spoke to writes music with a completely different approach. Every time I, I receive the, the score and I have no clue how to, to be a detective in this new style, new thought, is something that is very challenging. Mm -hmm. And if we only play the notes, it doesn't make sense. For me, learning contemporary music, um, it was uh, an experience very similar to like learning a new language. It's going to change your mm. way of thinking. The more you dig into the details of the pieces, hardly anyone has overlaps between the types of forms they're using, the harmonic language, texture, and general approach to sound. For example, Lise Streich creates breathtaking sounds with her chord collection technique. I have a whole book full with chords that I use. So it's actually chords that we know, that, but they are combined with the overtone spectrum of the singing voice. Rebecca Saunders is breaking conventions on how instruments are played and uniquely utilizes space and texture. I feel as if um, this life will not be long enough to work through all the sounds and the resonances that I feel uh, in the potential of the sound of the instrument. And Anna Torvarstotir seeks inspiration from sounds of nature and finds incredibly new ways to orchestrate. It's so much about listening to the overall sound mm -hmm. world of that piece. It's about also 
texturizing the orchestration. Mm -hmm. So it's not simple and it's um, finding what goes together to create that sound. Number three, new innovations are helping us better understand tradition. The new can be very old fashioned and the old can be very new. I like programs, you know, when you have traditional music and modern music because the audience has the chance to really see maybe the modern aspects of a Mozart symphony. And there are many dissonances, you know, deceptive cadences, surprise. You, you think you're in heaven, suddenly, you look into a, an abyss or something, or find traditional aspects in modern music. New roles are always being broken in terms of performance practices, but composers still respect traditional techniques as well. What is this marking? This that is one of the famous scratches. So that is... Because it's al dente. Al dente. <laughs> yeah. And this, this is just scratching sound. Oh, okay. But why would you use these sounds? And why would you abandon tonality or different systems of harmony that have served music so well for all this time? I think it's a natural evolution that's driven by composers seeking new ways to express more with the music and also provide new experiences for the audience. So for example, there's a beautiful place at the end of the piece where you only hear so and then you could say, okay, this is very modernistic and you only hear scratch sounds. But the thing that he talks about it is like you're in the middle of nowhere and the, the ice is there and it's spring and the ice starts breaking and you're just there and you just hear you know, and then this is one of those... It just makes sense. It's so beautiful. It's our duty and task to really go into the future and find new sounds. The things that we're doing these days uh, have nothing to do with what we were trained <laughs> to do. <laughs> and also just the different kinds of conceptions of virtuosity. I mean, there's some composers who, you know, holding a note for, for 45 seconds and, and then letting it disappear into the concert hall that's completely different than something like Boulez or, or some of the younger composers who write, you know, a million notes on one page that you have to jump around the whole instrument. Number four. You do not have to understand anything to have a great experience. With new music, the, the wonderful part is you don't need any reference. It's kind of like going into an art gallery, except it could be a little more daunting because you can't go about it at your own pace. All of it is sort of an invitation to just listen somehow, to listen in a different way. It's an invitation to, to be curious somehow. That's why I like contemporary music, because it actually asks questions. And uh, we shouldn't let ourselves be intimidated into not allowing ourselves to ask, ask questions. And also, you're not gonna like everything. While I was at the festival, I went through a lot of ups and downs in terms of liking the music or not. Ooh, um, they're both beautifully terrifying pieces. Lots of words. We just heard such amazing and overwhelming music. Pretty epic. It's going to be different for everyone and also it's going to be different from time to time. You may not like a piece when you first hear it, but then revisit it a year later and then absolutely love it. And so what you don't want to do is have misplaced expectations. One of the goals of music is clearly to, to communicate beyond words. And new music, yes, it is unheard and I think it takes time. It needs to be heard again. Um, don't believe that people were whistling the tunes of Don Giovanni by Mozart in the, the streets of Prague the day after the premiere. So, you know, not much has really changed. Mm -hmm. Number five, now is the only chance to experience current music while it's current. So imagine if you were alive during the premiere of Stravinsky's Rite of Spring or Barbara's Adagio for Strings or any one of these masterpieces. Different versions of this are happening. History is being made today, and I think it's so meaningful to participate in it to some degree. What is new music? New music is that is what is written nowadays, and the role of music has always been to be a mirror, I think, of the circumstances of a society, willingly 
or not. And also, there's a limit to what we can understand about our current times while we're living through it. So the best we can do, I think, is to contribute and play a role in it just by participating as much as we're open and willing to while it's still unfolding. Thank you so much to the Alpha Money for making this video possible, to Julia Smeltzer who helped me produce this video, and to my patrons on Patreon for your continued support. If you like topics like this, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video.